You'll like it, and we'll tell all your friends that Comics TV isn't about comedy, but comic books. Our first few shows might be a bit raw until we get this whole TV bit down. So bear with us if you'd like, completely if you will. Each week we will be reviewing the hottest new comics on the market along with what we like in the coming months. This will include Marvel, DC, and all the independents. Along with comics, we'll review collecting as a hobby. Cards, collectibles, movies, animation, sports, anything that we can think of that might fit in somehow or other. When possible, we will have special guests. We don't plan on portraying ourselves as experts, so you can take our opinions or not. We've adopted our own set of ratings for the comics, and here they are. If a comic is fantastically priced, has great story, art, without a doubt should be purchased, we give it a five star, five dead cats, five humans, whatever, whatever you want to call it, but it's a five. Very good. If it's very good, in fact, but just misses that greatness by hair, possibly because of price, possibly because of the art's off a little, the story's a little bad, we'll give it four. If the comic is just good where you read it and, yeah, it sits on a shelf for a while, it's worth a three. If the comic is okay, but you might be better off saving for a rainy day, we give it two. Lastly, if the comic really sucks, and you don't even know why we're reviewing it, and neither do we, we give it a one. Mm. Let's get this week's show on the road with our first segment. Okay, this is where we review the uh, current comics that are out, and uh, my main intent is to re review the independence, the strange, the weird, the adult, anything like that. First one I'm going to review this week is Vampirilla number three from Harris Comics. I picked this one up because it has a definitely hot cover. Comic women always look hot and Vampirilla is definitely hot in this cover. She dresses skimpy and some of the pictures are, of her are intentionally drawn from the breast view. This part of the story called Dracula War is by Tom Snigosknakini or something or other and penciled by Jim Belent. It's pretty good. Vampirilla finds out that Dracula is alive and is building an army hoping to eventually take over the world. She's out to stop him. He tosses her in a dungeon, she attacks him, eventually finds her, her aide, Pendragon, and they contemplate what to do. If you like vampires, this is for you. The art is great if you like women. The ads are mostly for death and heavy metal music, including one of Buffalo's own, Cannibal Corpse. Hey guys, you can send me a free demo copy of your album if you'd like. Uh, the book is $2.95, which is a bit high, but most books are getting higher priced anyways. And if you like vampires, it's worth it. It's a three and a half. Okay, my first book is I basically review DC, Marvel, all the basic comics that you've grown up with. My first one is The X-Men Unlimited, a new series coming out. Scott Libidell is the writer, Chris Pacello is the penciler, and Dan Parnesian is the anchor. This X-Men series is bound to be one of the best series X-Men ever printed. The storyline in this one has a great future in the X-Men series. It's highly recommended, for, highly recommended for collectors and for people who just aren't collectors who just start collecting now. The book is $3.95 and I give it a five star. I don't think it was worth five, but that's, that's, that was your choice. Okay, my next book is The Max Number One from Image. It's written, penciled, and inked by Sam Keith. Keith has worked in many other titles previously, including The Incredible Hulk. The artwork is excellent with the storyboard layout, not your normal square boxes. The story is a bit weird to figure out at first, but it is good. The Max is either a mutant or a very large guy in a cool looking outfit. He lives on the street and is sort of like a superhero or a savior of the week. The drawing is sort of a cross between real and comic form. The women look good and are all well endowed. Book cost $1.95 was worth it. Looking forward to issue number two. I gave it a three and a half, close but not quite. There's also the Max uh, trading card set coming out from Tops in the near future. We'll be here already. My second choice is the Justice League Task Force, number one. Uh, it's a new series coming out. The storyline has a very intense, in in the, the storyline has a very interesting twist to it. A new superhero force card, Justice League Task Force. Uh, it's the first in an unlimited series. Uh, series collectors can join the Justice League Task Force club. They have a card and an application form inside, so if you're interested, definitely send for it. But uh, I would highly recommend this. It's uh, for collectors, basically, and Justice League collectors, if you ever read Justice League when you were younger. I gave it a four star. It was okay. Okay, my next one, number three this week, is The Trouble with Girls, number one from Marvel's epic spinoff. It's a good book. It's written by Gerard Jones and penciled by Brett Le Blevins and Russ Miller. Lester Girls has a problem. 
He wants to live the American dream. Small house in a quiet neighborhood, plain job, normal wife, or normal wife, plain job, whichever one. Uh, the problem is he's rich, handsome, and always in the middle of trouble. Women throw themselves at him, and he lives in a mansion. All the good stuff that uh, myself and Steve will never have. But anyways, the art in this book is good. It's got that exaggerated look to it. Lester's tall, broad-shouldered, looks comic-like. All the women are hot, as usual. Large hooters and so on. Story is pretty good also. I give this one a three and a half. I must have been stuck on that three and a half vein there. I Cost agree. 250, but it was worth it. I agree. Thank you. Okay. My third book is Venom Lethal Protector. This is a six part series which could be. <laughs> My third book is Venom Lethal Protector. This is a six part series which could prove to be the hottest thing out there this summer. With Spider-Man as a special guest, this should be an interesting team-up series. Now, I'm not going to tell you anything about the book. You'll have to just go out and buy it. It's $2.95, and I definitely gave it a five-star rating. Five-star, huh? Five-star. You like the fives. I like the three and a half. We should trade books. I like the fives. Okay, my fourth one this week is Sex Warrior number one of a two-part series. It's from Dark Horse Comics. Scripted by Mills and Skinner and penciled by Mike McComb. I picked this one up for the title only. But the story is actually pretty good. It was recommended by Brian, so it must be good. Well, then again. It's set in the year 2105. Cure has been found for aging. The youth are attempting to wrest freedom from the wrinklies, or the elderly as they're called, who are in rule and trying to destroy the younger generation. The old and the rich would never die, so they began ruling, making harsh rules for the young. They use AIDS and the population crisis as reason for setting the harsh rules. They use steroids or genetically engineered sterile soldiers so they don't have to do the dirty work themselves. It's a continuous age war until the Wrinklies unveil a new weapon, the Mantids. Ooh. Around this time, a naked woman appears and tells them that she's there to help. Yes, that always happens to me, too. She uses sex as a source of power and is rejuvenated after having sex. Really? She uses her immense power to unleash a blast to blow up this machine, or so she thinks. Is she single? She is, yes. Okay. I'll find, I'll find out. Okay. Uh, the art is good. The story is different. Buck 95, it's a decent buy for the adult buyer. I give it a two and a half. Okay. And for my next selection, I'm going to pick Infinity Crusade. Marvel's Spectacular Summer Crossover Special. Oh, Not my goodness. Third installment of Jim Starlin's trilogy which everybody knows. Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity War, where War Warlock's good feminine half goes to war with the Marvel heroes. Well, you know how those go. You know, them half and halves. I think Marvel is trying to take more money out of our pockets on this one. You know, it's your first usual crossover. Very confusing. I wouldn't recommend it. I'd give it about a two. Ooh, ooh, two, two. Good for you. <laughs> my last one this week on, the, on my, my reviews is Necroscope number four from Malibu Comics. It's scripted by Martin Powell and the artist by Derek Gross. Gross has worked on other projects including the Vampire Lestat series. I picked this one up because of the fantastic cover done by Don, Bob Eggleston, or Eggleton. The art is good, not great. It's supposed to be realistic but sometimes it's a little off. If, you've seen the, if you have seen the Vampire Lestat series, then the art is exactly the same type. Liaison. Lestat. The ne Necroscope is a comic adaption of the book by Brian Lumley. This part of the story has the Necroscope, or someone who can talk to the dead, off talking to some stips while Dragosani Drago helps to raise the dead. Half these words I can't pronounce. At two ninety five, it's a bit pricey, considering there are ads in it. This comic is worth only one and a half. My last one is Spider-Man Unlimited, Maximum Carnage. Uh, well, you guessed it, Carnage is back, and you know what that means, massive destruction, and guess who else is around? His dear old dad, Venom, which proves always to be deadly. Teamed up with Venom is Spider-Man, who, who will win this war? It's good versus evil. It's a 14-part series. It comes out every week, and I would definitely buy it. And yes, Mike, it's rated as another five-star. Steve's a crazy boy that he is. Okay, next part, um, we'll be going into our, normally we'll be doing card, uh, trading card reviews, 
Uh, for the first few shows, we're working on that, so Steve won't be doing anything. That'll be Steve's department. Uh, now we're going right. to go into our previews, where we're going to preview upcoming books. Uh, by the time you see this, some of them might be out. Some of them might still be coming out. Um, with the, as with uh, the current books, I review mainly the weird, strange, adult themes, etc. My first book this week is Dark Angel, Death Dreams Number 1 from Boneyard Press. This is a book in my usual vein of sicko comics. This book is about serial killer Jonathan Gabriel. Gabriel slaughters a whole family, gathering souls to pursue the uncle that molested him when he was young. Sounds great. There are three short stories by Hartie Fisher with art by Daniel Presido and Eric Nolf. This book costs two fifty and might be worth looking at in the store first. Should be out sometime soon, if not already. My first book is 2099 Unlimited, number one. The 2099 Unlimited series, the first one will feature a debut of the Unbelievable Hulk uh, and Spidey 2099. They both encounter a costume, new costume villain called the Menace of Mudigan, which I've never heard of. But when you see the new 2099, when you see the new Hulk, you're really going to be surprised because he looks nothing like the old Hulk did. Definitely, it's two ninety five, and I would definitely recommend it. Look cool. I saw the pictures. He looks neat. Second one this week is uh, Dead World number three from Caliber Press. This ongoing series about zombies looks interesting. King Zombie realizes that Deke the gate opener is the key to unlocking the dead to allow them to, to take over the world, as all dead zombies want them. <laughs> Even Advanced Comics recommends this one. It's black and white, costs two ninety five. Take a look at it. If you like it, buy it. If you don't, leave it in the store. Don't bend the pages, though. My next pick is Cyberspace 3000, a new ongoing series with a cover that is glow-in-the-dark detail, All right. which should be really interesting. This spectacular science fiction saga consists of a harrowing journey of a group of Earth survivors in a desperate search for future. And by the way it sounds and the way it's looks like it's going to be made up it should be one of the hottest books out there i would definitely buy that one also cyberspace space 3000 cyberspace 3000 cyberman i am cyberman okay number three this week is evil ernie the resurrection number one from chaos comics i haven't read any of the other ernie books yet but the first couple should be out by now ernie is an undead psychotic and lady death is trying to resurrect him this is in that zombie vein, zombie, vampire, all that stuff. It's all the same. Unfortunately, Ernie gets uh, worse and goes on a rampage in Washington, D.C. Looks good, and this first issue has a full-color Lady Death center fold. She probably has clothes on, but it's okay. It's color, costs two ninety five. dollars Get it and tell us what you think. My next one is Punisher War General number 56. Anybody who collects Punisher knows how the Punisher series is. Frank muscles a gang of PCP-crazed rednecks with his new mobile computerized army. And this is something new that Microchip invented, so it could be a very interesting book, and I would definitely purchase it. I'm the Punisher. Okay, number four this week on our previews to come is Addicted to War from Inland Book Company. This is a softcover, 64-page graphic novel that exploits the U.S. war machine. It has photos, real facts, and comics all intertwined. According to the review, it says it's well-researched and makes the relentless history of U.S. militarism. militarism. Uh, this time I pick up and give it a read. It costs $19.95, so be prepared to dish out some bucks. Okay, my next one is the Infinity Crusade number two. Love your hair. Thank you. 48-page intergalactic action when Aurora suffers another personality shift. Aurora is the main character in here. She feels pulled to join the converted on Goddess Planet. The Vision, Iron Man, and Reed Richards join her there. So we'll have to keep following this. This sounds very interesting. So Which one was that? The Infinity Crusades, oh. number two. Okay. Okay, and my last one for this week on the previews is Graffiti Kitchen from Tundra. This one seems that it's almost, oh, not quite. It seems like all the ones that I've previewed this week are black and white. Uh, that's just the way it's gone. This one's, this, this one's by Eddie Campbell and is another graphic novel. It's a crazy little love story in where Alec is in love with himself, Georgette, and Georgette's mother, which could play uh, pretty interesting. Uh, sounds like my kind of story. In the end, he gets what he deserves. I'm uh, not too sure what that is, but 
1895, go pick it up. We'll all find out together. These should all be out now, so go down to your local comic store and ask them for them. Okay, my fifth and final one, The Incredible Hulk, number 407. It's called Project Piecemeal. A horrifying experiment escapes from a Red Skull's lab and encounters against the Hulk. And you know how the Hulk ends up getting in fights with everybody. This should prove to be one of the best fights he's had. It's released on May 23rd, and it's $1.75. Marvel has some new movies coming out. Uh, as you know, Fantastic Four is coming out. They also have complete control of all of their directing, um, producing, script writing for all the movies that they're going to be producing from now on. Uh, Fantastic Four was the last one which they couldn't get the script back, but of course they're hoping that it does well. It was low budget, but it, from some of the pictures we saw, it did look like it could be pretty good. Uh, Black Panther script is in the works, starring Wesley Snipes. I saw the Captain America movie a few weeks back, and although it is a bit corny, I thought it was okay. Probably not worth the second watch, but it was okay. Marvel has more in the works, and possibly someday a real Spider-Man movie will be out. I guess that's the end. Yeah, do you want me to go to that? <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Well, that's about all the time we have for this week. Next week, we'll be reviewing a bunch of new comics, cards, and tunes. Sounds good. If you have a favorite comic you'd like previewed or reviewed on Comics TV, C-O-M-X, Comics TV, drop us a note. Our address here is Comics TV, C-O-M-X, P.O. Box 2727, Buffalo, New York, 14240-2727. If any of the local publishers would like their wares reviewed, send us copies and we'll be sure to include them. Doesn't mean that we're going to give them good reviews, but we will include them. See you next week. Same comic time, same comic channel. New comics come out twice a week, so patronize your local shop and tell them you saw it on Comics TV. See ya.